What is going on everyone? Thank you all so much for tuning back in and let's just jump right into another little recap here. So as you guys can see from the thumbnail, you know I had to keep the red streak going, right? I had to add to the little pile, but today was definitely a lot more manageable because I look to basically just slow things down today. I know I haven't been doing well recently, right? I've been hitting a rough patch for sure. I've been pretty consistently red. And I just look to kind of scale back today. So I only was trading with $3,000 tops, whereas usually I'm used to using $10,000. And yeah, here is basically how I did. You guys saw I was down like $13, $14 right around there. And where do I think I've been hitting a big red flag? A big red flag I've been noticing for sure that even my brother's been pointing out because he's watched me take some trades, especially even today, is that... I have found myself taking a lot more trades than I'd like to towards these middle areas, right? I'm not taking it kind of where I should be. I'm not being patient enough. I'm not waiting for kind of the best kind of setups and the best potential margins to set myself up for success, right? I've been taking more trades towards these middle areas. And as you guys can see, just from looking at them, especially here, the middle areas are where it tends to be a lot more choppy, meaning there is no clear direction. It tends to have the most fake outs, right? As you guys can see, it tried multiple times to kind of uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend, right? A lot more kind of unclarity. So it doesn't make sense to kind of be putting the pedal to the metal and, and investing a lot of money when I try to usually take part in this inconsistency, right? I really need to do my part to take a step back and realize the fact that there is a lot of unclarity around these areas so i should only be taking a trade where it makes the most sense and where does it make the most sense just look at the five day five minute anytime the nasdaq has approached the top view off it has tended to follow with a pretty decent sized sell-off right it usually tends to every time it approaches the top view up right after that follow with a big little bearish play even right around these areas, right? Touching the top view up, falling back down and vice versa. Anytime it tends to approach the bottom view up, it does tend to try and kind of find a support and rally to the top view up. It even did that multiple times here, kind of right around this area, right? It tried finding a support near the bottom view up. And you, I just need to take, do my part in holding myself accountable to kind of validate these patterns and make sure I'm uh, doing what's right to kind of trade with what the info I've been given. Cause when I try and look at the middle, like you guys can notice, look at how many green and red bars are mixed in together, right? Like I sh just showed you guys, it's not the most clear. Whereas if you waited, let's say for a play at the top view up for a play for SQs, it's pretty consistently downtrending pretty significantly, right? There is not much green bars, not much hesitation even right around here, right? There was a little, little kind of balance, but right after that big kind of bearish play, multiple red bars following each other. And just like that, today was no different. So how did I end red today? Unfortunately, I was doing kind of my part in trying to follow this pattern for sure. But when I averaged them into SQs right around here, I thought we were going to get a nicer sell off down towards closer to the bottom view up, right? Towards the general area where it's tended to bounce off of but I should never be so greedy and the greed is what got me to kind of pay the price today because I didn't wait um I, I mean I was waiting for a huge sell-off right around here but I didn't pay attention to the fact that it's just a general area right I shouldn't be so picky and it ended up finding a nice support here going to top view up stopped me out obviously and then another basically nice little play where I was able to make that back. I was down like $40, $45 on the day. I basically got into another S huge play. I did my part to hold myself accountable to stop trading in this middle choppiness area. I took a play once it looked like NQ wanted to wither out, right? If NQ kept rallying very aggressively and kind of breaking this pattern, then I would have looked to start taking a T huge play, right? That's what makes sense because it's showing that these patterns are no longer valid. But I did see NQ kind of approach the top view up. It has broken above it multiple times before intended to sell off. So I was just waiting to see what it wanted to do. And right around when it approached this area, 
I saw that it really kind of wanted to wither out, right? There was not as much volatility, not as much momentum pushing it up like it had, let's say, on the way up here, multiple green candles in a row, right? We weren't really getting that here anymore. There were some red candles, and it just didn't really want to go. And I did my part to hold myself accountable to follow these consistent patterns. So I bought in with um, just $2,000 in SQs, and I was able to ride it all the way down to ride around 12,390. So I didn't hit all the way to the bottom lows, right? I did sell early, but I didn't want to get greedy because I just got burned like that being greedy, right? I knew that it was a nice and hard sell off and it could follow with some type of support here at middle VWAP. So I wanted to make sure I watched out for that. And obviously there was another beautiful play for a nice decent sized sell off on the day. But by then I had already called it because I was down almost break even, right? After being down like $40. And I just want to do my part to make sure I didn't over trade today because I know there is no reason for me to be taking more trades when I'm being inconsistent, right? That's just not being the most productive thing. And I was just real with myself. So decided to walk away, but NQ did find a little support. But as you guys can see, formed a very strong resistance right around here. It didn't want to keep going. And it followed the trend it's been having very consistently where it just had a nice sell off, right? It's done that multiple times. If I can show you again the five day, five minute, right? Multiple times where it's had a nice sell off after touching the top view up, right? Even right around here a couple days ago, touch the top view up again, nice sell off, start selling off nicely. And today was no different. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, go ahead and share you uh, with you guys my input on that, on how the NASDAQ basically tends to move and what I've been doing wrong, which is definitely I've been taking way too many trades in these choppy areas. So I just need to take a step back and, and really just uh, realize that and implement into my trading the better practices of trying to get in at kind of the highs of the day for SQs or the lowest of the day for TQs because that would just be setting myself up for the best margin, right? And on top of that, the trades would actually be worth it. I wouldn't be kind of taking part in areas that are a lot, that just tend to have a lot more on clarity. So yeah, thank you guys all so much for tuning back in. I know it hasn't been the, been the longest recap, but yeah, just very grateful you guys came and definitely going to hold myself accountable to just bounce back. I'm very excited to improve on myself. You guys have my word. I'm going to do a lot better because you guys definitely deserve a lot better just showing up and I'm going to just hold myself accountable to work that much harder. It's, it's really motivational when I have these types of lows to to just put in that much more work, right? And, and try to be my best self for a trader. So, yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, just keep in mind, Monday is a holiday, right? It's Labor Day. So, next week is only four, a four-day trading week. Just keep that in mind. And, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoy this weekend and really uh it's very fun relaxing and maybe you guys put in some time aside for trading too thank you guys all so much and have a great one